know that we women have gained equality with men in most areas, but it appears that we still have a way to go when it comes to dating. It's still the man who does most of the asking and the pursuing, and many women feel uncomfortable asking a man out on a date. I certainly would. Our next guest says that if women were to take the initiative more often, they'd meet the cream of the crop. I wonder what that means. From Men's Rights Incorporated, a group that addresses men's issues, please welcome Fred Hayward. Hi, Fred. Hi. Thanks for coming. Very nice to you're going to enlighten me along with everyone else. Now, let me ask you this first. Why, why should we change it? I mean, you know, it's been going along okay. I mean, men sort of ask us out and we sort of say yes or no. I mean, what's wrong with the way it is? Well, I, if, if you're watching the same talk shows I watch, right. it's not going okay. Women have it's a not. lot of complaints about men. Like what? And when you think about it, most of them are made worse by this. Well, some of the complaints, um, as you kind of alluded to in the introduction, women complain that there aren't enough men out there. Right. And one of the reasons is, is that a lot of the men have kind of opted out of the system. You know, they're, they're, they're just sick of dealing with that rejection. And so you will find more men if you start to initiate. Also, women complain that of the men who are available, there aren't enough, enough sensitive men. And the sensitive men are even more likely to be the ones to not initiative because they're in touch with their feelings. You know, they know how much initiative hurts and they don't like that. Yeah. Um, they're respectful of women and they don't want to intrude into a woman's life without a clear invitation. So you're saying that the men out there that are available have really mm -hmm. pulled back and have just sort of dropped out and they're not dating but, at all? Well, there are many more men you know, who are like that. Plus, there are a lot of men that you reject because you think, God, this guy is really drunk, you know, and you reject him, or he's obnoxious, or he's awkward, or he comes up with some trite phrase like, do you come here often, and you reject him for all of right. these reasons. Yeah, you and wanna. When, yeah, and, and when a, a woman one. starts to initiate, then she finds herself doing the exact same thing. She finds herself uh -huh. drinking a little too much, sound, coming across awkward, to, you know, to her surprise using the same lines that she hates to hear, um, things like that. And so the next time you hear a man say that, you're tempted to yeah, reject him. If you've initiated before, you might stop and say, well, wait a second, maybe underneath that is somebody who's as nice as myself. It's interesting because in reading about all of this, I, I really had to think about the times, it's been a while since I've dated, but in those times when someone has asked me out, I, I think of myself as someone who's kind. So I've never been mean to anybody, but mm -hmm. I, I never realized that a man would actually go home and really be devastated or upset if I, if I had turned them down from a date. Do you know what I mean? M more than that, not just going home and being devastated. There was one study of violence in dating bars. And, and really? yeah, they studied the fights among men, and they found that every single one of the fights that they studied had all been traced to a man being rejected and then taking his anger out on somebody else. And then a lot of the sexual harassment that women deal with, you know, men making obnoxious comments in the street are also, I mean, you know, we, we can just go down the down list the of female list. complaints yeah. and almost every one of them is made worse from this. Why? Well, sharing housework is another thing. You know, oh. the women complain that, you know, men don't share, do, share yeah, do right. the cooking. Um, but this is, this is what sets up the pattern. Long before there's a diaper to change, the first work in the relationship is taking that risk. And why, it's, why it's, do it's, women it's not woman. want to do it? Why won't they not, take the initiative? It's, well, one thing is it's not pleasant. You know, rejection, it's like changing a diaper. Is that you know, it? it? Is that the real reason? <laughs> and, uh, That's um, very graphic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get that. And, and, I do, I get re that. Thank you. Yeah. And rejection stinks, you know, so nobody wants to do it. Um, so that's one reason that women don't want to do it. Um, it's a, it, it's, it's a whole new role. How would I do that? Let's say, I, Frank, mm -hmm. I'm, this is a pretend thing. Okay. I, I wanted to ask you out, Fred. Mm -hmm. What would I do? What would I say? Fred, I think you're very nice and I'd like to get to know you better. Uh, would you like to have coffee with me? If I didn't know you were married, that would have worked. Oh, yeah. pretend I'm not married. <laughs> pretend I'm... Uh, yeah. Play this game with okay, me, Fred. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, in fact, um, right, there was a survey of, of men and they found that most men do prefer just an, an honest approach like that. You don't have to come up with some witty, cutesy line like, that... Like, yeah, hi, big guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. let, you know, men, yeah. men are, are just going to be so honored and thrilled in they general. They will. That, they really know. will be honored and thrilled, mm -hmm. even if they turn so us down. E well, you know, th that's, an, that's an interesting point. If they turn you down, a lot of times you look for a way to turn the other person down that doesn't destroy their ego. Right. 
And so a lot of times if a man rejects a woman, he's going to say something like, well, I prefer to be the one to take the initiative. Yes. But it's just an excuse usually. Okay. You know, he's, it's just a, a way of packaging the rejection the way a woman might say, I have a boyfriend, when she really doesn't. All right. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to some of the people in our audience about how they feel about this, you women and you men. Okay? Don't go away. <laughs> Discussing why women should take the initiative in starting relationships. Fred is with us. Fred, let's go to some of our audience members. Uh, this is Ruth, right? Yes. Please stand up, Ruth. Right. Tell me your full name. Ruth uh, Justiani. Justiani. All right. Now, Hi. Ruth, you initiated, I understand, the relationship with your husband now. That's right. How? Why? Well, how did it all happen? Well, I'm a realtor in San Antonio, Texas, and right. he lived in the New Jersey area, and he called me on a listing of mine he had seen and he came into uh, San Antonio and I met him and he was very nice and so one evening after we finished looking at houses I invited him to dinner. And how? What did you say? Uh, I said, well, why don't I take you to dinner tonight? And being Italian, he did say, no, why don't I take you to dinner? And so I said, okay, if you're taking me, you have to pick me up. <laughs> Good for you. Were you embarrassed to do it? Is the first time you'd ever done that? Um, I don't remember if I had ever done it before, but I'm not very shy. Did it feel good to say, would you like to go to dinner with me and have him accept it? And, and you feel, well, would you feel like you were in control? I knew he would like to go to dinner. See, that's the thing I said to you, Fred, on the break. If I had the sense, Frank, stand up here. This is Ruth's Frank, not my Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, were you shocked you? When, when Ruth asked you to go to dinner? I was somewhat, yes. Were you? No one had but, ever done that before? Not to me. I'm never that lucky, but I sure am <laughs> Now, did you immediately get, did you feel like, oh, she likes me, and, and, well, it, and the relationship immediately began then? It certainly did. What would have happened if she hadn't done that? Would you have asked her out? Probably. You would have. Because okay. it was love at first sight. Oh. <laughs> nice. You got a catch, didn't you? you know, now, there's, there's what, a lot what about Fred, this. I had said to you before was, see, Ruth felt this from Frank. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would ask someone out if I didn't feel this. If I just went up to somebody and thought he was cute or attractive or, you know, interesting or whatever and said, hi, would you like to go out with me? Mm -hmm. I would have to know somewhere that he wanted to. Well, I, um, that's certainly comforting. And, and with me, even if I'm not initially attracted to someone, the fact that she asks me out makes me think, well, maybe there's more to her than I've noticed so far, mm. you know, so don't only limit yourself to the people where you know clearly you're not going to be rejected. But on the other hand, that's another important bit of advice. A lot of the women who, who try to initiate wait until somebody walks into a party or a restaurant that is just so drop-dead gorgeous, you know, that they feel, okay, this is it now, I want to meet that guy, yeah. and then they get rejected. So another bit of advice is, you know, do it with people who are, you know, uh, giving right. you a chance of, of not right. being rejected. Thanks, Ruth. But, but that's also very typical. It um, is. Yeah, yeah that uh, of the number of relationships in general, a tiny proportion of them were initiated by the women. But of the number of successful relationships, like that marriage, a much higher proportion were initiated by the women. It, it does work. It does work. Pat, stand up. Tell us your full name. Pat Davenport. Uh, what do you think of this? Have you ever done it? Yes, I have. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I tend to agree with Fred. You do? Yes. You may re be rejected. I had been rejected once, and it took me a little while to recoup. I didn't do it when I was in my 20s. I did it when I was much older. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think I could have done it when I was younger because of the society that I came from, the environment. Well, see, yeah. See, we come from the same society. Uh, younger, I, I could not have done yes. it. Older now, maybe. The thing that is interesting, if you ask a man out for dinner, like, like Ruth did with Frank, do you, do you pick up the tab? I mean, how far do you uh -huh. take this? Do you go, uh, I'd like to go to bed now. <laughs> I'm ready. I mean, do you do the whole number? You know, now that you've got this thing going, are you like in total control? Is that the well, idea? No, certainly you should not. Well, you should not be hypocritical. If you feel that when a man asks you out, you expect him to pay, then yes, you know, be honest to your own principles. Right, right. But you don't have to spend a lot of money. You know, you can Burger ask him King. out to a... <laughs> That's true, Burger King. <laughs> what about a man who's married? If you see some guy walk into a room and he's very attractive, and he doesn't have a ring on, and mm -hmm. you really don't know, should you say, uh, uh, 
Hi, are you, isn't this awkward? Don't you find this awkward, Pat? Are you married? Do you say that? Well, you know, now you, you've learned one of the reasons why we had created the different titles of Miss and Mrs. for women. Right. Um, and, and when we changed over to Ms., that deprived men of, right. one, of you know, one of the clues, which was very important for men. Yes, there's and only if, a if women, yeah, hear if that, women were sharing the role of initiative, mm. then they might have come up with a different solution. Instead of eliminating Miss yeah. and Mrs. for men, they might have created different titles like, like well, that. Well, I was in a situation like that also. I had been at a party, a house party, and a group of people came in and 